morning, everyone. So um, here we are, some of the, uh, the proposal and challenges that we have for Division 2. I'm going to begin to talk about the batteries that we're developing, and then Professor Hudson is following up with the supercapacitor uh, development. Um, so why did we choose this configuration? It's because uh, lithium oxygen batteries and supercapacitors are respectively the extremes of this Raglan plot. So they stand for high energy density and how high power output. And there's a lot of unanswered questions uh, in order to actually develop devices that can uh, have a future or, or to, there's a lot of, of things to have to sort out in order for this to actually become something real. So this is the lithium oxygen battery. So that's the laboratory of advanced batteries that we, uh, uh, that I am coordinating with uh, also the students that I'm gonna show you in the organogram. So just to have a, uh, overview of how this technology works. It's basically lithium oxygen batteries. They, they work as a half open system. So it's, you take, basically you take the anode from a uh, lithium um, battery and mix with a fuel cell because you have like the porous oxygen electrode. And you do the reactions from this oxygen with the lithium ions to form discharge products. And of course that those discharge products have to be decomposed in order for the device to be charged again. And of course, there's a lot of challenges when we do that. For example, we can uh, usually see a big loss in terms of capacity once we cycle the device, because there's a lot of side reactions that might be happening on, on this electrode. Uh, we also see large overpotentials between our discharge and charge. So uh, we have a lot of challenges in terms of electrocatalysis uh, to get to a better efficiency device. And as in fuel cells, we also have this problem of uh, triple phase boundary. So we have to have the um, material to conduct the electrons, we have to have the lithium ions, which is in liquid phase, and you have to have oxygen uh, as uh, our um, reagent. So, of course, the solution for those problems will pass through development of new materials and new electrodes. But in order for us to do that, we also have to create a deeper understanding and to create knowledge uh, for those devices. And that's also why uh, we have um, a huge amount of work developed to development of in situ and operando characterization techniques. So I'm just going to show you some uh, uh, brief results. So this is basically our proposal. So uh, there's two projects underneath, uh, which is the novel electric configuration and chemistry. So uh, we use a lot of carbon-based uh, structures, for example, carbon nanotubes and porous templates, uh, the decoration with transition metals, the functionalization of those carbon nanotubes, the integration of those uh, carbon structures with some other metal oxides that acts as catalysts, and of course, the use of soluble catalysts to mediate the, the reaction and improve the, the device. And this is coupled with uh, some techniques that you're developing, for example, X-ray diffraction, Raman, and FGIR, uh, also going to micro and nano FGIR, and some other techniques that we are still uh, trying to develop. And just put it just here because we started in 2016, so it's, uh, it's a newer uh, program. Uh, and now, since we are connected with CINI, then we are actually uh, improving a lot in terms of results and, 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 um, that we have. So this is just an example to bring you some of the um, uh, materials that we have synthesized. So those are um, the, the electrodes that we have created. So we're, we grow these nanotubes on top of stainless steel meshes. Uh, we are also looking to grow the same structures on carbon templates, so like carbon, uh, none of uh, carbon fibers uh, as well, because you have to have this porous structure for the reaction. Uh, this is some of the progress that we have made. For example, when functionalizing these electrodes, we have seen a uh, um, large improve in terms of discharge capacity, for example, when we treat it with oxygen plasma, or when we do acid treatment to improve the defects on the structure of those carbon nanotubes. We also have mapped this defect increase with Raman. 
uh, and connect this improve in terms of capacity with these defects that you can create in the structure. So this is uh, one uh, one uh, progress that we have made in that in that direction. And also I'm going to show here uh, some of the developments that we have made for the in situ and operando cells. Uh, so basically we begin with this standard cell that we have developed in-house for this lithium air system. Uh, and from that, we created some other smaller versions and some other versions that we can take those cells and test it in different techniques. So for example, this, uh, this cell here, we created for the nano FTIR experiments, as Anna Flavia already mentioned, uh, the capabilities of that. And these other ones we developed for the X-ray diffraction and we created also a chamber for uh, containing the, the uh, synthetic air that we used to run the experiment. So this is, that is all of this has been in-house developed. And with this new instrumentalization, then we have a results, for example, like this. This is a operandi result that we have using X-ray diffraction. So for example, we can see here the formation and after the decomposition during charge and discharge. So this was like a 16 hour round cycle that we had to run uh, at the Singleton facility with synthetic air. And we have seen this peak of lithium oxide, for example, being formed and then being decomposed, showing that the re reversibility of the device. Um, of course, a lot of work has been put to develop that. Uh, we also have some previous results from FGIR, not still is in the same level that we hope to achieve, for example, as Anna Flavio showed us. But for example, here, uh, this is basically uh, still a proof of concept. We, we have uh, more beam time in, in this next semester, but those results just show, for example, how different decompositions can be depending on the, if you're measuring right on a particle of your catalyst or if you're measuring more in a, in a region where you have more um, electrolyte present, you're forming different species and also side products, which we are still uh, investigating because knowing the, the directions, knowing the compositions, uh, it's a very, very important thing for the, the progress of those batteries. So this is just briefly showing like our entire team. So we have uh, for the two projects, for the new electrodes and for the in situ and operando um, devices. Um, so we grow a lot since the beginning of the project. So we have now um, uh, a lot of people trying to, to push this forward. Uh, I guess most of them are here today. And also to just to tell about the future activities that we hope to, to do for the battery project. So we want to exploit more of the carbon fiber templates, not only, like, for example, the stainless steel that we have been used, but also some other carbon fiber templates uh, to be able to grow and control the growth of the carbon nanotubes uh, on those templates. Uh, some other carbon supports, for example, carbon paper or electroplating, uh, we are also working on the synthesis of metal oxides, for example, some perovskites and spinel based on cobalt and manganese, as they tend to have a catalytic activity for the decomposition of the discharge product. And also uh, evaluate some soluble catalyst chemistry. This is uh, a new branch that we are uh, improving. We hope to improve a lot in the next 12 months. And also we are hoping to finally get the MO commissioning as uh, we put in the, the initial proposal, the um, um, scanning electrochemical uh, microscopy and the XPX that's also improve a lot in terms of what we can do in, in, in synthesis of those materials and electrodes. And continue the in situ development for continuation for the X-ray uh, diffraction and also Raman and FJR, which is the focus for the next 12 months of, of development, for example. This is just a, a summary of some of the integration that we already have. Besides the seminars that we have been at in, in other research programs, we have also uh, have the help from those researchers for some of requiring some, to have some of the materials and to prepare some of the electrodes that we have used for these, um, uh, these results that we have so far. 
Okay, so I'm gonna uh, invite my colleague, Professor Hudson, just to uh, give you some other uh, information about the supercapacitor project, since he's more suitable to, to do that. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just passed to the second part of uh, the presentation on the advanced energy storage. Uh, as Gustavo said uh, for you guys, uh, one side on the Hagwon plot, we have uh, batteries and full cells that have large amount of energies you can store on this device. Normally, they have a, 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 a low current, let's say this, compared to capacitors, because capacitors are power system device. Normally we start smaller amount of energy compared to batteries, but in a, a high power way. So we can start device very quickly and we can um, uh, uh, give charge to the, to, to, to the application very quickly as well. So uh, what we want in this device, this presentation is give you guys an overview, say where we start and where we are uh, up to now. So this project started with uh, a young uh, investigator grant from FAPESPI in 2017. So we will build a lab here in the university where uh, I, I, I'd be hired. So let's talk about, uh, about the, the, the technology first, then uh, I present to the team a little bit and say how we try to uh, develop this kind of device. So supercapacitors, basically they are uh, electric, electrostatic system. So when you apply a voltage or a current, the a double layer is formed here uh, in the surface of the both electrodes. Compared to a conventional uh, capacitor, so ca conventional capacitors you have, just to give you guys a, a thought about the technology, you have uh, two electrodes separated by a dielectric. Here in the systems, uh, uh, we have uh, electrolyte in the middle, so the, the dielectric is not like a polymer, uh, could be, but uh, is not the case here. So you have a, a aqueous or organic or ionic liquids. So when you apply a voltage, a double layer is formed. This is electrostatic process, this is happening in nanoseconds, very quickly. So for that, uh, you, 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 to, in order to increase the capacitance, you, you want to have a very high surface area, materials, and this, these materials must be uh, really stable uh, on this kind of uh, uh, device. So the materials we most use as a template is a carbon-based materials, let's say carbon nanotubes, activated carbon, graphene, and all this stuff. So that's the configuration of the cell. In the middle, we have a membrane that's uh, uh, electrical insulator, but ionic conductive um, um, material. So we use normally we normally use a paper or uh, a, cell, uh, a polymer. So, uh, what's the main challenge of this device? What, where we want to be with this device? We want to. Uh, continue using this very interesting property of supercapacitor, which charge very quickly, discharge very quickly, but we want to increase the energy we could store on the device. In order to do that, we have to, to, uh, to play in two different parts. Or we increase the capacitance of the device on uh, increasing the surface area and reduce the distance uh, in the, in the electrolyte, and uh, let's show here. Uh, here we have a solvate ion, and the distance between the, uh, the solvate ion and the electrode for uh, it's very small, is an order of uh, nanometers. So you want to make this distance as small as you can, and in order to increase the capacitance, you want to as well have a higher surface area. So both of these uh, tasks are very important, features are very important to increase the capacitance because uh, the distance is inversely proportional to the capacitance and the area is proportional. So another part is uh, we want to uh, play with different electrolytes. There's uh, some students of ours uh, play with uh, water, uh, which have a work window potential 
uh, about 1.2 volts in your three electrical systems. And with organic electrolyte, we just get a glue, glue box. We can play with organic electrolytes now. And we can have a, a higher uh, voltage window, about three volts. And we can uh, uh, produce as well uh, ionic liquids and reach six volts. Some of these electro electrolytes have peculiarities. For instance, water is very cheap, very conductive, but smaller work window voltage. Organic electrolyte is a little toxic, uh, uh, as well as uh, ionic liquid, but have a large work window voltage. And both of organic and ionic is, is more expensive. So we are trying to play off with all of them and to check the best one. Another main issue we have here in supercapacitors is uh, to reduce the self-discharge. It's charged very quickly, but in aqueous electrolyte, we realize the system discharge in, in a daytime. So in a daytime, we have 30% of the, the, the energy we storage. So the, one of the main challenges is to reduce this self-discharge. So as I said, we start with, uh, in 2017 with a uh, FAPESP grant. And uh, in this grant, we prepare different type of uh, carbon-based materials. So let's, we start growing the, 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 the electrode Gustavo show you guys here. Uh, so aligned carbon nanotubes, or we, 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 in another front, we uh, prepare activated carbon. So we choose very uh, bio, biomass, for instance, and uh, carbonize this, functionalize with different um, activation process, physical one, very cheap, water, CO2, and we activate uh, with uh, um, uh, chemicals as well. So we always compare these results. So, uh, but what we got, uh, basically is that the this, this system is very powerful, but uh, there is no energy, uh, there is no much energy storage compared to a battery. So what we do, so we decorate all these kind of materials with different metal oxides that could be oxidized and redux, re reduced, or a polymers. So uh, in order to do that, we do that in order to uh, increase the, the faradite process. So now, Instead, only have uh, uh, electrostatic uh, uh, formation on the surface. We are exchanging electron between the electrolyte and the electrode, and that, that's something that really increases the main problem, which is the energy storage. So, basically, in this project, uh, uh, in the shell with FAPESP funding, we have two projects, which is project six and seven. And in this project six, uh, I'll start with project six we develop electrodes. And uh, this, these electrodes are mainly carbon-based electrodes, and this represents 10% uh, of the capacitance we have. So we are moving in this project to de decorate all this, this kind of carbon-based materials with uh, um, a, uh, very small particles, as you see here, uh, two to 10 nanometers particles size and that's, that's a way to uh, exchange electrons on the surface in an ultra-fast uh, process. And this process, we can be, uh, have a, a similar time uh, to the electrostatic one. Uh, otherwise, um, the, the, if you try to uh, charge very quickly, the system only have an electrostatic response. So. Um, we do this decoration and we do some characterization in, the, uh, in some ways I'm going to show you guys here. So basically, after preparing the electrode, we try to do uh, uh, some electrochemistry. We, in this project, we do loads of electrochemistry characterization, charge is charge, uh, cyclovoltometry, or impedance, which is more sophisticated. And then we try to uh, uh, prepare equivalent, ser uh, series, uh, uh, equivalent circuits to, to extract the data from the, the, the device. So just to give you guys a thought, uh, that's one uh, of uh, the, the circuits we use, which is a canonic system. We are developing a, a new uh, way to see the, the device, and some of the papers are underway. I'm going to show some published or, 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 or some underway. So uh, all the development we do here is to move from the, this first grant we get, got from uh, FAPESP from the Young Research to the 
bigger cells. So all the development we do, we choose the, the current collector for, for, extent, for instance, the way we could extrapolate for larger cells, a, a cell that is the size of a, a cell phone, for instance, a smartphone. We're going to start on this kind of cell first and then we move for a cylindrical cells, okay? So uh, that's a, a trick part because uh, some of the components we, we have here could be reduced or oxidized, uh, deteriorated, and the supercapacitor is no uh, as a device that could survive for a million cycles, a million cycles, could cycle a lot. So we don't want to use any component here that could degradate very quickly. And we want to use a component that could uh, survive for this long cycle uh, and could be manufactured. For instance, we have loads of papers on literature showing, showing uh, carbon-based materials for uh, supercapacitor, freestanding carbon-based materials, but they do not serve, uh, they are not good for welding or kind of process you have on manufacturing. Project seven is focused on inoperando measurements. So basically we prepare a coin cell and uh, in the, the first attempts we have, we make a hole in a coin cell with the, 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 the systems like I, show you guys an uh, electrode, uh, a separator with a hole in the middle, and the other, the top electrode with another bigger hole, and then we do uh, X-ray or uh, synchrotron or Raman. Uh, we got a more a sophisticated, sophisticated cells now from the cell where we do not use a captain uh, to close the system. Here we use just a, a, a tape to avoid the electrolytes to vapor, vaporize, so now we have a, a closed system and we are going to do some measurement very soon. So here, just some of the results to guys have a look. A supercapacitor normally is a square shape, a uh, psychovotomogram, and um, uh, uh, we uh, apply some of the nanotubes decorated with uh, a niobium oxide, which we got from uh, CBMM. Uh, the, the, the minor company, and what we observe when we apply a voltage on the cell, uh, or we charge and we discharge the cell, we observe that we have uh, some shift on the Rama, a D band, and um, the, the, e, the G band, the G band, and this shift is related to intercalation process, and something we are uh, still studying to. Uh, uh, check uh, in a more simple system if that's the case. Um, and, uh, but the, pr the, point, the point here is that for about 0.8 volts, we can get this kind of intercalation process that we do not see normally in aqueous based, based electrolytes. So uh, one of the, the, the new developments we are doing, we are preparing graphene and decorate with a, a niobium pentoxide doing FM and uh, scanning electrochemical microscopy to see uh, if this uh, niobium pentoxide, for example, could be nickel oxide, could be um, uh, manganese oxide, could be any metal or polymer, have a, a chemical activity. So we know for niobium pentoxide that's in a book phase is a, is a insulator materials, but when you make this in a nanoparticle size, this is, we, ha we, were, we are observing some conductivity. So that's a, a one way to do in operando or uh, in situ uh, techniques to see. We use this kind of measurement that we scan in the surface. We know the current of the graphene. When you see the, the, the particle on the top, we can see any contrast, or increase or reduction of the, the current and you see if the particles is activity or it's not activity on, uh, on this kind of system. So we have loads of development. I'm going to show a number of papers next is, uh, slide, but all these kind of things are possible because we have a huge team, loads of students, most of them are here and that's, we know that's the people that do the job and this kind of, this, I will have a very good team. People are very dedicated. Few of the, just to have, give you guys a look, we have half of the team focus on the inoperando measurements. Another half is studying electrolytes, uh, electrodes. Some of them are doing applications as well. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, applying a, a wearables device or a drone, etc. 
Uh, this is a curve from the hour of our projects, just to give you guys a look on the S curve where we are. We are doing almost everything we promise. And um, uh, in terms of publication, we, uh, we prefer instead try to give you a, a, a huge, huge numbers of results. We're going to show just, we have about 20 papers, f uh, f uh, 25, five is already published, uh, seven is under review, two in press, and 10 is under preparation with about 8% of a conclu uh, is, uh, the paper is concluded. So we are choosing uh, journals that is, 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 uh, is a good quality journals. Uh, some of them uh, are very important in this specific topic. So uh, just to conclude, uh, the future activities we are we are making mix of carbon nanotubes and uh, activated carbon, and we believe that's the best platform for electrostatic system. And we are decorating this kind of platform with diff very, uh, uh, different amounts, uh, different uh, uh, types of uh, metal oxides and polymers, especially conductive polymers, punny, poly hole, and P dot. We are setting a manufacturing that's coming from China, a few, the, few uh, uh, machines. And um, uh, we are having the uh, MU, uh, the, the microscope and the XPX that we are about to set. So there's loads of uh, inoperando analysis underway, especially in Rama, that's we are most developed. And this here, we are doing a collaboration, the scanning electrochemical microscopy with Professor Lauro Kubota and uh, Professor Mauro Bertotti from USP. And Kubota is from here. And XRD, we are doing a collaboration with uh, LNLS. And hopefully, we are uh, um, doing all, uh, putting all this knowledge we have uh, with people from Slack, Michael Tooney as well. And um, thank you guys very much. Uh,